Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com and uh, today I am repairing key contacts and a bunch of, uh, of keyboards that use this uh, membrane uh, carbon contact style uh, keypad uh, for, uh, for registering the keys. I think it's a Panasonic uh, key bed. Um, so I've just done my OB8. So I figured as long as I have this uh, material mixed I might as well do my Prophet 600 since it's the uh, exact same style of, uh, of key bed. And as long as I'm going to do it, I might as well make a video to show you how you can do it to your keyboard. So uh, I'm going to open up this Prophet 600 and you get in, uh, we'll open the top panel by removing two screws on each side, which I've already done. And uh, we open it up like this and uh, I am going to disconnect the, uh, the keyboard cable. This connects the, uh, the keyboard to the synthesizer, so just this one connector here like this. And uh, if you need to, uh, you can mark uh, which is pin 1. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some screws from the bottom of the keyboard uh, so I can lift the key bed out. So with the screws removed from the bottom and the connector unplugged, I can simply just lift the key bed up and out. So uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this circuit board from underneath the key bed and there's a bunch of screws uh, running along here and you can see the diodes from the diode matrix that the keyboard uses. But I'm just going to remove these screws and then I'll be able to pull these two circuit boards out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run along the, these two circuit boards and I'm going to gently pry these uh, rubber strips of key contacts up and off. There's just some little nubs that kind of push through the board and hold it in place. You don't want to, uh, to tear these because uh, then you'll ruin them and have to replace them. Uh, just trying to get them out with as little force as possible. So I'm going to run down the board and get them all out. So there's three reasons why keys on your Prophet 600 uh, can become dead or uh, intermittent. And uh, the first one, which would be the easiest to repair, is uh, these contacts on the, uh, the circuit board uh, have become dirty. Stuff's gotten under the little rubber pad and uh, your, your key contact here is not making good contact with the pads. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, run down uh, this whole circuit board and clean all these exposed pads. And I'm using a denatured alcohol and uh, they look pretty clean so I, I'm pretty sure the reason for my uh, intermittent or, or dead keys is not because these are dirty. But while we have this off and, and open we'll clean all of these up. The second reason that your keys may be dead or intermittent is that, uh, that these uh, key contact assemblies have become damaged. If the little carbon contact, the little black dot in this rubber assembly uh, breaks off, this thing is, is garbage and you have to find a replacement. Also these tear, um, they can get torn, uh, they can come out and, and not be uh, seated properly on the circuit board. So you want to go through and inspect these and make sure that they're they're all seated properly when you put them back and that they, um, they all have their little carbon contacts in there. The third uh, thing that can cause the uh, keys to fail or, or become uh, intermittent is uh, the conductive material on, uh, on these pads just wears off. It's just uh, inevitable that that's going to happen. This is the same thing that happens with like a remote control for your TV. Um, if you have a, an old TV, um, you know, your buttons can become difficult over time and eventually cleaning isn't, isn't, doesn't fix it and you need to, to do something else. And uh, with the OB-8 that I just uh, I did in another video, someone had put tin foil um, on some of these to try to make them uh, conductive again. Someone had put little uh, stickers of carbon conductive material on there which had came off pretty easily and, and also weren't working. Uh, what I do is I use this product, um, and there, there's a few different products of similar to this out there. Um, this is a Circuit Works rubber keypad repair. It costs about $30, $35. Um, you can buy it 
at Fry's or Amazon or, or wherever. And basically this is a conductive paint. So I've already activated this uh, for my OB8 ski bed and I'm just going to show you how I paint it on the key contacts. Um, uh, one bottle of this gives enough material to do tons of key beds, uh, but the, the vial only lasts uh, a few days once you activate it. So uh, it's, uh, it's best to, uh, to go through all your keyboards once you've, uh, once you've mixed this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a tiny bit of this material on my brush and basically paint it here on the, the tips. So uh, since it's putting stuff down fairly heavily, I'm just going over roughly right now. And now that there's less material there, I'm going to go back and level everything out. Make sure I have good coverage. You don't want to put it on too thick. Um, just a, a very thin, thin coating, enough to get full coverage, but no more. And that's all there is to it. So I'm going to do this to the rest of the contact strips and then I'm going to let them sit overnight to dry and then we'll put them back in the key bed. It's the next day and the uh, key contact strips have dried and it's time to put them back onto the circuit board. And uh, each strip has six contacts with the exception of one which has seven contacts. And the, uh, the highest note on the keyboard is the one that has the, uh, the seventh contact. So. Um, you can kind of put that one in first and, and go from there. And basically to put them in, just line up the little nubs with the holes and uh, just gently push them through the board. And you want to make sure that they're completely through and that the strips are laying flat and that's all there is to it. So I'll move the camera and let you have a close-up look at, at um, putting one of these in. So I got this first strip in with seven, and you can see that that extra key contact is, is here on the high C of the keyboard. Uh, now I'll take the uh, painted key contact strip, the next one, line it up with the holes in the circuit board, and then just push those little nubs through the board. And you want to be gentle with this because you don't want to tear this rubber strip uh, because that will ruin it. And uh, once you've uh, pushed them through, have a look at it. You can see here that this isn't sitting completely flush against the board. So I'm going to go through and, and again just make sure everything is sitting completely flat against the circuit board. And again, that, that's all there is to it. So I'm going to run through the rest of the board, put the rest of the strips in, and then we'll put this circuit board back in the, in the key bed. So now that the key contacts are back on the circuit board, all we're going to do is flip it over and reinsert it into the key bed. Uh, there's these little white plastic uh, little guides that will hold the circuit board. And you kind of just tilt it and uh, pop it in, uh, making sure it's in, in, all those, uh, in all those guides like that. And then uh, have a look and make sure that your, uh, your key contacts aren't folded over. I'll show you. You want to check in here and make sure that none of the key contacts got out of alignment. You can see that they're all okay with the exception of uh, that one there, which is kind of tweaked. So we're going to have to reseat this again and verify that all the key contacts all the way down are... See, there's one that's not sitting correctly. Um, and, and that one won't work when you, uh, when you go to, uh, to play it. So we're going to get these all straightened out. And if you're uh, wondering how we get those straightened out, so I'm kind of just gently pushing the board back, and I'm going to take some, uh, some tweezers and go in here and just kind of poke that so it is, uh, it's straight and will be activated properly by the key. Now that I'm satisfied that the key contacts are sitting uh, flat under there, I'll go ahead and uh, screw the uh, board back to the bottom of the key bed. Uh, just put it back in, all the screws you took off before. Put the screws back in on the bottom of the circuit board. We'll go ahead and put the key bed back in the synthesizer. So we just kind of set it back where it was. And uh, we'll put the screws back in on the bottom and uh, reconnect this one cable over here. And then we'll cl 
close it up by putting the two screws back on each side. Then of course the last thing to do is to test all the keys out and make sure that they're working properly, that you fixed it. Um, and uh, if, if some keys still aren't working, uh, go and check to make sure that those uh, little rubber, um, rubber strips here uh, did uh, stay seated flush against the circuit board when you uh, put it back into the key bed. Like I showed you, sometimes they get kind of tweaked out of position and you got to make sure that they're straight. Um, otherwise, uh, the, the key won't work. And there you have it. Uh, for not a lot of time, not a lot of money, um, I showed you how you can uh, repair your dead and intermittent keys on your Profit 600. Uh, if you have any questions, please post in the comments. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.